moves as fluidly as a human. In Japan, robots have become so much a part of everyday life that no one gives them a second thought anymore. Occasionally, even official visitors find themselves going to shake hands with them. The zeal and enthusiasm of large Japanese businesses for their mechanical robotic friends is deeply entrenched. Unlike in Europe, where robots are portrayed as cartoons in computer graphics and comics, in Japan the image of robots is a completely positive one. In the future, armies of these metal creatures will stay by the side of and care for people as though they were their partner and companion. Robots are thought to be the future in care and support services. In an experimental laboratory in Nagoya, we are introduced to Raiman. He is the newest prototype of the care robot. He can both see and hear. He is oblivious to smells and he can assess and evaluate the health and condition of an individual. A network of sensors under his silicon epidermis ensures that the robot can track human movement with his eyes. However, Ryman seems to have a sort of independent existence of his own. Something is evidently irritating him during the shooting of this film. Ryman really should have let go of the doll. For some incomprehensible reason, he holds on tight. The scientists give way, back to the drawing board. Ryman has to be reprogrammed. It is still dangerous and unpredictable to let such heavy creatures lift old age pensioners in and out of the bathtub or simply run around alone in a house. So the problem today is that because you see it's a structure, we could not use these parts to do any, any work. Yeah, yeah. We can only use the so-called end factor to mm -hmm. capture very small things. Mm -hmm. In fact, our human... And technically, I think we still have a lot of problems to overcome, such as safety problem, and such as how can we evaluate the Lehman's technology, such as how to teach people to use Lehman easily. But I expect the technology should be used, should be applied in the reapplication uh, within five to ten years. I think it's urged for us. Until now, three generations of the same Japanese family would often live as one household, under the same roof. That phenomenon is becoming rarer and rarer. Robots are starting to be looked upon as an alternative way of caring for pensioners, a solution to the problem of provision for old age. One wants to avert mass immigration at any price in Japan, but who is to care for the aged? We can consider some other solutions, such as to uh, introduce the foreigners, young foreigners, to come here to care of the aged person in Japan. But it should be understood that not only Japanese be aged, also the surrounding country are also go through age. For example, even in China and also in Korea, they all face the same serious problem. So we could not expect the foreigners can solve Japanese aged problem. Ryman and co. will probably be first deployed as nurses for geriatrics by the time today's internet generation reaches retirement age. The robots are currently lacking a decisive characteristic, emotional intelligence. They will need to become much smarter. Another unsolved issue with this generation of robots is devising the best way to make them acceptable to the people who will be using them. Expert technicians in high-tech workshops are working hard at developing humanoid and man-like robots. It is amazing how people react to microchips. Another example is how to 
um, catch up the human's information more directly from their brain information, brain activity. Nowadays, we have communication with each other by watching your face, by listening to your sound, but your brain activity can be catched in another way using a lot of measurement technology. So using that technology, we can construct the more, maybe more smooth or more advanced, uh, how to say, um, human attention interface. Robots with a certain degree of mental capability already exist. One of the most famous of these is Paro, an interactive crawling baby. This sophisticated robot can recognize its name and adapt its behavior pattern to circumstances. Elderly people with dementia uh, is screaming because of the anxiety or are they in a bad mood. But they, they completely change <laughs> after very soon, quickly, and when they start to interact with Paro. Some elderly people can, uh, cannot speak well. Uh, they have confusion in their mind. But they, when they uh, interact with Paro, they uh, they fluently talk to Paro, and uh, uh, they look like very normal. In a few decades, robots will become so lifelike in appearance, function and personality that it will be difficult to distinguish them from humans, however far-fetched and unimaginable that prospect may seem today. With any luck, though, it will indeed be a good few decades before robots can be fully deployed to form just as efficiently as humans.